let's move to next slide so identity provider now so uh, here some something about the uh, SAML concept will come into the picture uh, for identity provider so basically identity provider by the name itself you can say right identity that is user account or user identity and providers they are providing the identity so uh, so, so basically whenever you do login anywhere like for example Facebook uh, it is basically going to the authentication store in the backend and it is it is uh, reading that username and password from there and then it is allowing the authentication for the user same way uh, here uh, Facebook is an identity provider same way here uh, identity provider also known as authentication authority it provides external authentication for the user who want to sign in into Oracle Identity Cloud Service using their external provider credentials. In such cases, external provider will act as an IDP and IDCS will act as an SP and would be signing in with the external authentication. Okay, so now let, let me show you exactly uh, the real part of it. Okay. So dashboard security. So you see the word uh, identity providers here, right? So whenever you click on identity provider, these are all by default. So what you will have to do, okay, identity providers basically, uh, let me give you one example, one more example which uh, you will understand is, so now currently what is the process of logging into, into the IDCS? So currently we are logging in with this login page, right? So currently we are logging with directly uh, as a Oracle IDCS as a authentication store. So because this account is present in IDCS, and the, the password was set and this uh, credential we are giving and signing in but you want some other uh, if you want some other source like for example Azure AD or any any Facebook account or any Google account whatever it is because that that, that time account will not be present here right so what happen is uh, you have to create an SAML IDP at SAML IDP it will ask for the detail like I'm just giving example here because we don't have the metadata fusion test IDP test okay so now go to next and configure it so you will have to import the identity provider metadata so whatever is your authentication store you will have to add the metadata okay next uh, or manually also you can provide the details like entity ID uh, issue a certificate and all you can add that since it is mandatory we will not be able to move ahead so you can see it here uh, details configure and map you have to map some attributes if you want yeah you, you can export the metadata service provider metadata you can test it and you can activate and deactivate this okay so so here in this case right like uh, you are adding an additional identity provider so you will have your user will have a different option uh, different option as in whenever uh, they they will get an option here so again there are uh, one more settings to do that but you the, your uh, your user will get uh, this login page along with that login using the, some option will be there here as well uh, below sign in you will that the user will get one more uh, option to login like the user can log in with this uh, where the the identity provider will be different so in such case whenever you add the IDP your uh, IDC is just kept this uh, Oracle IDCS will become as a service provider and the external identity provider will become their other authentication store so users should be present there okay that user will be present there in their identity provider okay so this is the identity provider uh, configuration so but okay uh, so you should be having some questions saying ki what are the parameters how it will know how it will trust it so uh, because of that digital certificates will come into the picture so whenever you upload the metadata here right so whenever the metadata is uploaded uh, whenever the metadata is uploaded at this part 
it comes along with the certificate. Uh, the metadata should have certificate. If it is not there, you will have to ask the external identity provider. For example, Azure AD. Just take the example of Azure AD. If they have to give us, provide us the metadata. And in the metadata, import it and if there is no certificate present, you will have to uh, you will have to talk to them and get the certificate also. So what IDCS does, it will store that metadata. So whenever the response comes from their uh, application, ready uh, it will validate that response okay so digital certificate is like a digital identity card to exchange information securely over internet IDCS has SB obtained certificate from IDP to validate the, validate the signature okay so that is a digital signature then SAML just in time So see, uh, as I told you, IDP will be Azure AD and service provider will be IDCS in this case. Uh, so whenever user access IDCS login page, so the configuration, the SAML configuration is done at this stage. Okay, at this stage SAML configuration is done and everything is completed, activated. Okay, so uh, in that, after that uh, user, what user will do, user will uh, try to log in with Azure AD, uh, which option will be provided at the below of the screen. Okay, uh, then whenever the user Okay, so now uh, my user is not present in the IDCS, but my user is present in the uh, uh, Azure AD. So what I'll do, I'll try to log in with Azure AD. So using SAML configuration, okay, using the SAML assertion will have the username of me, okay. So by that it will create my user in IDCS automatically. That is SAML just in time. It, the SAML has that uh, capability to provide uh, user lifecycle management also, but only for provisioning and update. So again, if the user attribute is updated, okay, in uh, Azure AD, so when I, again after that, uh, Rushad Kumar access the, the IDCS again with the Azure AD, my attribute gets changed in the IDCS also. But there is one limitation here, SAML just-in-time doesn't support disable or deprovision it. Deprovisioning and disabling the user is not, uh, is a limitation in SAML just-in-time provisioning. So it is only for provisioning and updating. Okay, <clears throat> I hope uh, it is clear. So now uh, next screen, uh, yeah. If you see just in time provisioning is used when a user account is not present in IDCS as SP, user trying to access resource but isn't present in IDCS, it will automatically create user using JIT feature via SAML assertion. So yeah, manage identity provider. Uh, yeah, let me see one question. The SAML does real time sync with AD. Yeah. So whenever the user is not present in the uh, so for example, your account is not present in IDCS but is present in AD, right? So whatever user, if you are added newly or uh, real time is also fine. It will take it. It will. Uh, it is. It is not like you know uh, doing the sync as in if thousand user is present in AD. Automatically, it will not come to uh, IDCS. The, all those thousand users should log in there. During the login process, only account is getting created. Okay, so now let's say Zot Prasad is in uh, Azure AD, but not in IDCS. It's not like it will automatically create it without doing, without you do not, without you not doing anything. Okay, if you are doing something, if you are logging in to the IDCS with Azure AD, then only it will create it. And only if now Rushab Kumar will try to access, then only my account will be created. Even though if it is present in Azure AD from long time, it is not created in AD uh, in IDCS. 
unless and until I try to log in with the Azure AD in IDC screen. I hope that is clear. Yeah. Okay. So now manage identity provider. So it is same uh, uh, steps I showed you. Add an IDP, view details about IDP, and activate the activate IDP. This one. Add SAML IDP and do the configuration accordingly. IDP policies. So policy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Here. So uh, whenever you do the, uh, I, whenever you add the identity provider, you can add uh, a new policy to that. You can add the rule. So you assign identity provider, whatever as, uh, identity provider there in the list for that particular identity provider, and you can uh, uh, do the, that rules and configurations. Like for example, uh, there are some limitation. Like add this or something, rule name and rule uh, assign identity provider to that, and the assign that app. So uh, different apps, like apps as in this apps uh, applications, you can uh, you know make sure you add uh, whatever application you want to uh, have this kind of uh, policy for those uh, identity provider for external identity provider. Okay. Uh, and it will appear in the sign in page. So it, even this will this step is needed to add that in sign in page. Specific are attempted to access resources that are protected by IDCs. So okay, SAML identity provider, social identity provider, passwordless authentication provider, or local identity provider. So this type of identity providers are supported. So whenever you go and identity provider, you can see this right. Uh, 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 SAML IDP and social IDP and password and all it, it is automatically added there, username and password <coughs> okay these are local basically you can see the naming right local social IDP SAML IDP now you should have asked me passwordless authentication provider so this is basically it is a setting in the uh, let me show you where this setting is default setting I believe so Okay, so basically there is one setting where you have to uh, enable that passwordless authentication where it will be asked for only username. Okay, it will not ask you password at all. Like for example here in the screen, you are asking for your username and password and passwordless, this field will not show. What it will do, username, it will ask only username and then you have to click on next or sign in, you will be asked for MFA or any OTP or something. There you don't have to do any password related stuff, right? So that will happen in passwordless. Okay.